Thank you for sharing your evening with me. I am J.B. Bryan of J.B. Bryan Financial Group, a registered investment advisory firm and the home of Afroeconomics, established in 1995, thank God. Definitely, this is what we do. On Wednesdays, you go to the website, afroeconomics.com, click that picture, boom, you are in there at the events calendar, taking advantage of God who has been preparing us for this. We have been doing Zoom for a long time. <laughs> and you wonder sometimes to everybody who was doing the right thing, and you wonder why nobody is noticing, it's because God's preparing you because you're going to be ready when your people need you most. It's amazing. Now, just being able to hit that switch, go through my day with my clients using my tools that I have been preparing for for years. I mean, I have consistently said I have to make sure that my office is fully functional no matter where I am. I want to have access to your information, my, all of the data that I can, so and for it to be secure and to be in a system that makes sure that everybody is protected. That is all. All of those desires came because this day was coming. Now, this is an opportunity for us to make sure that we prepare ourselves individually. There's a lot of things going on this year. And too often, things happen and we know nothing about it. We cannot afford to find out about things afterwards. So I feel that it is my responsibility for me to make sure that I'm on top of everything that's coming out might be coming out, that they're thinking about. This is all I do. All I do is build this Afroeconomics system of comprehensive financial planning. And it is anticipated that more people will be negatively impacted by this coronavirus financially than will be impacted by it negatively in their health. So think about that. Everybody's thinking about saying, oh my goodness, you know, this is gonna happen and so-and-so people and are gonna, you know, possibly get sick and this and that, you know, but even if, God forbid, even if one of us has to get the virus and it, you know, happens, you know, more of us will be impacted by it from something that touched you financially and possibly even bankrupt you and your family financially from this. You know, I know people where both members of the household are out of work. And it's not just people that look like me going through this. So you know what they say when other uh, groups get a cold black folk, we get pneumonia. You know, let's make sure that that doesn't happen this time for us. Let's make sure that we're on top of this. That's why I had those workshops last year where we were talking about, and even earlier this year, uh, expecting the unexpected, making sure that we have our emergency fund, making sure that we understand taxation and we understand how these tax forms work. I even did a video, it's on YouTube, about falling in love with the 1040, you know, <laughs> like, and we've talked over and over because I want each of you filing. And you may not go to be able to go to your tax preparer. So I want you to feel confident enough, especially as a member, to get in that system. Pick your favorite, call me, see which one I like the most, and let's get, get, let's get it done. You know, I can give you a second opinion. I can look at it. I'm not a tax preparer. I'm an investment advisor. I'm a financial planner. But I look at financial at tax forms all the time. Look at them all the time. Find errors all the time. Help people do their plan, do, do it correctly all the time. Help people make sure that they're including all of their deductions and expenses all the time. So use your resources. Take advantage of the benefits of Afroeconomics membership. So 
today we want to look at like what has changed, what is happening, what what are some key things I want you to think about that's going on since March 13th when the Trump administration declared that we are in a national emergency. They approved the Families First Coronavirus Response Act. And from that act came things like free testing and paid emergency leave and enhanced unemployment. Meaning you can file for unemployment, possibly you should be getting it easier and you should be able to have coverage for a longer period of time. And I hope that it's not applicable, but if it is, don't delay, file for unemployment immediately. Nutritional plans are available. You know, there's so many things that are available for you that we have to make sure that we take full advantage of. I want to show you, um, I'm going to show you something. Uh, this is uh, under the Department of Treasury. I'll show you this. Because I want us to not like find these articles that are online and then, you know, just from somebody's website and on the bottom of it, you find that there's, um, you know, some things that have, that have nothing that's legitimate for you. So those who have student loans, Dr. Williams, um, send, and then if you can send it, when you send, send all panelists and attendees, Dr. Williams, if you don't mind. And he said that the um, U.S. Department of Education so has some relief through the CARES Act. And indeed, and that's you know, funny that you um, brought that up because that's what I'm about to show you <laughs> some things. So if you go under this U.S. Department or home, look at the top, if you can see on the top, but U.S. Department of Treasury, if you Google that, policy issues, and then it has personal finance and consumer protection and then steps for quicker financial relief. And it just gives you some um, steps on um, use your tax refund payments for food, medicine, and other items for your family's well-being. True, right? Right? Medical care, housing, caregiving for your children, telephone and internet, and transportation. I guess, you know, they have to put this out there because for a lot of people, they really don't have um, their priorities straight. They really don't know. So, you know, and then this is what Dr. Williams is talking about. Student loans, U.S. Department of Education has issued a special guidance on student loan repayment. So make sure you click through there, get that information. Um, um, Trump, President Trump announced that all federal student loan borrowers will be able to suspend payments for up to 60 days. That was as of March 20th. Not that I want you, if you all are doing well and you're doing your payment and you still have your job, keep paying it for as long as possible. But hold that in the back if something happens and it catches you off guard. Don't take advantage of these things if you don't need them. Really don't. Because I'm telling you, there is no free lunch, you know? So everything comes, everything comes at a price. Like even if I show you some things about having access to your retirement accounts, you're taking away from your future. You're spending it now and you might need it later. Of course you're gonna need it later. So there's no, you know, there's always a give and a take, right? So then, um, making sure that your basic needs are met. Look at this, rent, the talking to the landlord. Many cities and states have programs that are not allowing landlords <laughs> to do evictions. They've stopped evictions, right? So make sure that you check that out if you are in a situation where you've lost, um, lost your income. And then what about mortgages? Contact the lender. Take advantage if you need the help when the federal government has encouraged many lenders. Because remember, many people have loans that are backed by the federal government. So they're saying that we've backed this loan for you. This is our loan. So let's make sure 
that they are able to continue to survive during these horrible times. Because what? If the banks go have a hard time, who helps them out every time? The government's got them. So this is the least that they can do is to make sure if you've lost your job or lost your income or your business is closed due to this crisis, this national emergency, then you should make sure you contact your mortgage lender and explain to them what's going on. And then it's also um, saying get um, credit counseling from a nonprofit organization. Make sure that it's legitimate, not somewhere that's charging you $200 a month for credit, credit counseling. And also in membership, you know, for a fraction of that, I'm able to help you with your credit goals and credit issues. So, I mean, seriously, all we have to do is do it. And then also, um, you know, so this is a good resource for you. And I, the bottom line is make sure you, you communicate. If you're in, I believe that the best way, if you're in a situation where your income has been cut due to this crisis, this national emergency, you have to communicate with everyone that you owe. This, you have to talk to them. You have to talk it through. True? So that, 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 is, that's a key, that is a key point there. And then, so go to, and I should go back. So I'm going to share it again. Go to there just for some general tips. U.S. Department of Treasury, see what the government is helping you with. And then I'm also, let's look at some other things that I wanted us to think about. The, um, and that's funny that, um, that Dr. Williams brought that up at that very time. So that is that just confirmation that we are discussing what we need to be discussing. And then the, um, uh, let's talk about what I was sharing about the, um, that you're able to do some things with your retirement account because of this national emergency. And the um, recently, a, the, the coronavirus bill allows for you to take a distribution of up to 100000 Now, make sure that you get this verified and you talk with your financial professional about the details. And probably in small print, print it should also have like, talk with your tax advisor about this you know, issue. Because someone will understand this incorrectly and do the wrong thing and then say that I told them to do that. So I am not giving you any tax advice. I am merely referring to information that I have read. <laughs> I have not done this myself. So the, it, during, according to the coronavirus bill, it is to allow you to take a distribution of up to 100000 from your retirement account this year without the usual 10% penalty that applies to investors or savers under the age of 59 and a half. Okay? So this is just, if you are in a situation where you cannot pay your bills and then you're in a major crisis and you're not 59 and a half and you need to have access to your money be, and you've been saving it and you've been doing a great job and you need $20,000, why would you take out a hundred just cause you can't? Don't do it. It's your money. It's your future. Just cause you can doesn't mean that you should. You need to be very careful in many cases in my opinion, one of the best things that you can do right now with your investment dollars is to make sure you don't spend them. The best thing that you can do, given if you have a well-allocated investment portfolio that's poised for the long term, because there's a great distance, let's just say five years or more between you and when you need that money, you should allow your money to continue to grow. Seek financial advice before you go and just take advantage of this tax opportunity just because they're allowing you to take it out. 
you got to be very careful because this, that 10% penalty is nothing compared to the income taxes that you have to pay on a $100,000 distribution. I didn't say you don't have to pay income taxes. I said you don't have to pay the penalty for being under 59 and a half, right? Y'all got me with that? Being all quiet over there. <laughs> so, so I want to just encourage you to make sure that you are just conscious of that. And then also, you have something called required minimum distributions. Let me make sure that I um, stay. So my first point is just that you can take up to 100000 without tax penalties. If you're under 59 and a half, you can do that. Just because you can doesn't mean that you should. So my second point is proceed with caution on withdrawals. And my third point is that tax returns are due July 15th. But if you know that you usually get a tax fund refund, why would you wait? Why would you wait? That July 15th is for people that owe money because they're not going to penalize them for not paying their tax bill before July 15th. So they don't have to worry about the April 15th, but they better have that money in check by July 15th. So, cause even if you file an extension for October, remember that the money is always due on April 15th. So if you owe money and you do an extension, you're paying penalties from April to October, even though you might not know you are, they're gonna charge you penalties. So your tax returns indeed have been given the privilege of July 15th. But if you are owed money, and you know, most people are going to get some money, you know, that would say the majority of people in America are going to qualify for this $1,200 check that we talked about last week. So you do your tax return, you can get that money, plus you can get the refund that's owed to you. So in that situation, procrastination doesn't pay. <laughs> in many situations, procrastination doesn't pay. But I am gonna tell you about a procrastination, a situation where procrastination can pay off for you in this one because of this, because of this national challenge. So then also check with your employer about paid leave and what their paid leave policy is. Because there is like some um, federal mandate that it, that is, you know, and I found this, let me show you on the, um, I found this like on a human resource website. And you might think of this as a, use this as a resource. But the, um, and it was under um, employment law. I'm gonna show you, I will share. Let's look at this. So this one, um, shrm.org. And it is a human resource nonprofit and under their resources and tools. And then see under here, it says, um, the US Senate approved the Families First Coronavirus Response Act and the, I'm gonna tell you about, and then it has like information on paid family leave and then paid six leave and large and small company um, exceptions to that rule. Um, and then the, um, the, you know, I think this is important um, to, to make you, help you just be able to articulate what you might want to ask your um, employer. Because uh, there are a lot of people who are um, high risk or have a chronic illness, don't feel comfortable with the traffic that they're exposed to at work. How can you protect yourself and still pay your bills? So check out the paid family leave, paid sick leave. And I think this paid family leave, look here, it says, will only provide such leave when employees can't work because their minor child school or child care service is closed to, um, due to a public health, the health, the public health emergency. So that's the family leave, but then the sick leave and, you know, so find out about you know what the leave policy is 
and then know um, what they're required to do for you. The um, interesting thing is though, that, um, you know, um, that it's hard to um, force anybody to do the right thing. Like if you work somewhere and they don't want to do the right thing, like, you know, no matter what, like even if you went and you sued them or, you know, whatever, that takes, it's a long process. And the most effective thing that we can do is we knew that you have to know that before you get to times like this. So the lesson in it is when you know that you're in a toxic environment, start updating your resume, move out of that environment so that you are not in a time like this in a toxic environment that you realized a long time ago was not going to take care of you in a time of hard times. You know that. You know what time, what company is really about you, and you know what company is not doesn't care about you at all. So um, be honest with yourself and, and prepare and learn from this that I, you should have been gone a long time ago. Now I'm gonna have to deal with this that I should have I should have taken this on, I should have taken care of this, I shouldn't even be here right now, but I am. Then you take it on face to face and address what do they have available for you. But make sure you protect your health because you can always get another job, but if you're not healthy and not living, you know, you cannot get another job. So um, make sure you put health first, definitely. So the, um, also, um, the mortgage and rents, we talked about the, um, that, point because I was looking at it with the school loan information that uh, part of your personal finance and personal concerns that the government has dis um, distributed not a mandate but a policy for the lenders to give you 90 days but also check with your municipalities about um, what how are you protected as a renter and um, how, mu how much time um, are you protected from eviction? Because as you're going through this process, it would be good to not have to worry. Like if you're laid off, you're on some sort of furlough, you know, it would be good not to have to worry about um, taking money out of your retirement account to pay your rent if you don't have to, right? Even though it's penalty free, it would be great that if it's that bad, it would be good that you're using your money for your food and taking care of your health than to have to use it just to keep a roof over your head. Um, so the um, de definitely um, make sure you find out what the laws are for you and how you are protected. Then, um, now this is where I was talking about procrastination. The um, see people over 70 and a half as of last year were required to do the required minimum distribution out of their retirement accounts, that meaning they are required to start taking money out of their retirement accounts at 70 and a half. Just like you're required to do start social security. You're required to start social security at 70. Well, as of January of this year, all of a sudden you, it changed to 72 for the requirement to take it out of your individual retirement accounts. And how much are you required to take out? It's based on the value of your account of the previous year. So if you wanna know how much you have to take out for 2020, you take it from the last statement of 2019. December 31st, 2019, that's what the required minimum distribution is based on. But and that's the required minimum. But because of this national state of national emergency, you do not, the coronavirus bill, which just passed, includes a measure that waives the required minimum distributions for 401ks, IRAs, and other retirement accounts for 2020. 
So for some people, that is really great news. And for, pe for people who take that required minimum distribution at the top of the year, well, you know, it would have been great if you had waited. Because if you don't need it, you know, you're paying taxes based on value that's probably higher than the value of the account now because of the market drop. So many retirement accounts are down. So they're having to, that if they still have to take out money, well, their required dis minimum distribution is going to be really elevated because of how high the market was at the end of the year. So they're kind of factored that in that, you know, and it's, it's kind of a, a problem that a lot of members of Afroeconomics have. I mean, I do have quite a few members who are over 70 and a half, now over 72 for the new criteria, who do not like the fact that they're forced to take money out of their retirement account. And that's where I want you to be. I love that type of problem. It's like, okay, this is good. <laughs> this is good. That means that you're living within your means. And you really don't, because there's so, unfortunately, too many people that actually their income is not enough. So even when they take the required minimum, they're taking more than that because they need so much in order to maintain their standard of living that say their pension and their social security, and it's still not enough. They need to take that out. So they're not going to be able to take advantage of this waiver. But when you're talking about somebody with $2 million and their required minimum distribution comes close to $100,000, you know, that hurts when you don't need it. And you have that much taxable income and you don't need it. So this is in, from that perspective, this is a, you know, can be a great opportunity for them. Yeah. So let's see. So then let me see. I have, Another note for you. Oh, also the um there it hasn't it's been anticipated that there's going to be more things coming that like that this um was just the beginning that they wanted to get something out there to help, but they're saying that there will be another coronavirus bill and that it might include like reenacting some of the tax breaks that existed before. That before the um, I, the standard deductions were doubled, and more people were itemizing, so they're saying they might add back, like n have no maximum on the amount of interest that you can write off, and um, no max on local tax deductions or things like that. You know that, um, and then um, basically um, helping people who have a lot of money. So. Um, it's interesting when I watch the politics on things like that, when let's just say a particular, um, a particular <laughs> political party might say, might position themselves like, I'm really about the poor people. But then they come out with something like that, that they know that most, not even just poor people, the majority of Americans do not itemize on their tax return. So when they doubled the standard deduction, it helped a whole lot. So if we're talking about you want to help the most people. Well, it's like over 70% of people prior to this tax change were already doing the standard deduction. So there's only a small number of people who were actually hurt by it taking out, you know, taking out the, all of those standard deductions and changing those, I mean, changing those itemized deductions. It helped more people than it hurt. But if you want to try to help people with money, then you can add those things back. But it's just interesting because they will position it like this is, you know, we're doing things that are helping Americans, yes. But don't try to tell me that this is to help people who don't have money, just like the fact that you can write off homeowners' interest in the first place. That is one of the biggest subsidies in the world. And then they talk about like public housing, but then you can write off the interest that you pay on buying something. You know what? So like that, uh, mm, they don't want me in there. So 
definitely, um, I think that these, these are some things I'm going to continue to bring forward to us. Anything that I think that will help us, empower us, um, I, the information, I'm going to bring it as much as I can. And thank you. Um, thank you, Dr. Lewis, for um, sharing that information as well. Please, you all, share as much as you can. Um, bring it to our meetings. Put it out, panelists and all attendees. It said, um, <laughs> Mr. Jefferson said it hurt me to have no deductions. Yeah, but it, it probably um, helped you also because, you know, they have actually e extra standard deduction for seniors and everything. So if I prepared it pound for pound, I bet I can show you how this one helped you even more. But one um, interesting thing, though, I realized that most people don't give to charity because of their relationship with doing the right thing. <laughs> because charitable deductions went down drastically when the um, they didn't they when they doubled the standard deduction. And that just shows that their incentive was for the taxes not to help the nonprofit. That to me is sad because you still can give enough to charity that you can exceed the standard deduction. And I see people do it all the time, but you just have to give enough. It, Keith Smith said, what's up with the forgivable loans from the small SBA? I know, forget, I know, right? He said, what's up with them? I don't know, but I wouldn't trust it. Talking about small business loans. They also have these new um, small business loans that are coming out and somebody sent it to me. It's not a loan. Well, the word loan is where you want to run from anyway. But now they have, and you'll probably get the email tomorrow, Mr. Smith, on grants. And I, I will, um, but it's a grant for payroll. So if you feel like you're not going to be able to pay your payroll, then you can apply for that grant. So I like to look at the applications when they give out stuff like that, because the application will tell you exactly what they're trying to do. And they're asking you all this information about your business and this and this and that and blah, blah, blah. Bottom line, if it looked slightly like your business is not going to continue to exist, you are not even going to get that. Because the kind of, if they want to give you a grant, you, they don't need to ask, like, um, how well is your business doing? Do you think your business is going to be here? You know, blah, blah. You know, how were you doing before? Uh, what were your sales from last year? This and that. Like, you know, you're getting, the organization that's, offering the loan is getting a government grant to get that money to you. But yet they're gonna ask you all of that. So it's all, like all of it to me is a, just another form of just information gathering. And we need to be very careful on how much of your private and professional and your business information you put out there just because they're gathering information. And then you might not even find out about the grant or the loan for six months down the road. It's like, how fast are you going to turn this around? Because if you're trying to make payroll, so we, I, the, uh, Mr. Jefferson said, I agree with you on that. So, you know, if you're trying to make payroll, how, how am I going to, people need to get paid like right now. So what is, what is this process on it? And they're not telling you anything and they're asking you everything. So I think we really need to have some uh, process closer to home on how we're, how we're going to come up with funding for each other. And I would love to see down the road, um, Afroeconomics have a program where we're actually networking more as business owners and as professionals and that how we're, you know, are able to, because just as one person or two people, their business is hurt by this, there's also other businesses that are doing even better because they do these things. You know, we might have a healthcare company that's doing and making more money than ever. So that comes, so by the diversification of it, this, you may be able to help each other because they're making more money and they need somebody to help. And you're not making the money. And when your money, when your business is in favor, you can help them back. So, it's, um, you know, definitely we need to be talking more. We need to be networking more. Um, the Afroeconomics Fest last year was just the beginning. That's why I have the next year already up because we need, look at that. I got that burn on my hand. <laughs> I've been cooking too much. The, um, but the, 
definitely we need to have when we have our fest like that we need to talk more and continue to exchange more and that entrepreneurship a workshop is going to stay a part of the Afroeconomics Fest. Thank you all so much. This is all recorded. So I'm definitely going to record it, put it on our YouTube channel so that you, if there's a part, a certain part, a certain resource that you need to get back to, you'll be able to look at it. Indeed. Know that I'm here. My email, jb at jbbryan.com. My number, one eight four four. JB Brian, go to the website, click contact me. You know, I'm working way too much, so I'm not even gonna say, but just, just know I'm here. I am here for you. I hope you all are doing well. Let's continue to pray for each other. Uh, the members only meeting, members only meeting, Friday morning, don't forget. I love that I have y'all. We are doing so much online. Now that most of you that are working are working online and those of you who are retired, I finally got you to sit down and participate in that members only meeting on Friday morning. Let's do it again this Friday. And then also on Sunday morning, we have our Afroeconomics pop-up church. Let's make sure we do that. Ms. Beecham, Ms. Beecham, I don't know what you're doing Sunday morning at seven, but it would be great if you would perform for our pop-up church on Sunday. Ms. Loretta Beecham, we have a superstar in Afroeconomics. She was at our pop-up church um, on, in March, in March, wow, last month, right? But at the fest, but think about it. I'm gonna be reaching out to you. We should do that. <laughs> that would be great. I can put you right up on the screen. Just be ready. They'll be ordering your CDs and everything. Yes, well, love y'all. Yes, indeed. Love y'all. Talk to you soon. I'm just a call away. I'm going to go back and I'm, I'm going to continue to play this one about debt freedom. Control, has your credit score recently taken a hit? Because we don't want that to happen. Your credit score it's dropping can impact employment, credit score.